On the north Somerset hills of the Tintsfield estate lies a field known locally as the Water Catch. Now home to livestock and wildlife, the field once housed significant human activity. Archaeology student of Bristol University, Rebecca Kalawin, has been investigating the features. When I heard about the project, the way I was introduced into it is that um, there's this great, you know, kind of Victorian estate um, right outside of Bristol, beautiful buildings, houses and everything, and that kind of off to the side during the war there was um, a black army hospital there. Um, it was kind of separate from a larger American hospital. and. Um, both hospitals were American, um, however one was, you know, kind of secluded and separate and that was specifically for African Americans. Um, so that got my interest in the project immediately and, um, but as we kind of got more and more um, in depth with kind of the logistics of the project, what's been done, um, what we know, how do we know these things, it's really turned out that we don't really know if that's what it is for sure. And so I think we're still really in the process of trying to figure that out. Um, but also we do know that when they did build these hospitals and um, they did want to keep African Americans separate and as far away as possible because oftentimes there was um, you know a lot of uh, tension between white Americans and black Americans and so to kind of negate all that they would you know separate them and for anybody who's been to this site I mean it is out of the way but it's definitely you know accessible to the larger American hospital site so. We still don't have any kind of documents, anything official that really like says that that's what it is. Without those documents, the best way to establish a connection between the site of the 74th hospital and water catch would be to compare the archaeology. But of the 74th, there is nothing left. Water catch field must therefore be examined independently. By looking at the site, you see, oh, it's just a bunch of square cement bases. But if, if you actually look a lot closer at them, they're all very unique and were probably constructed for specific use. And the archaeology is pretty, right now at a stage, it's very general. All we have really is just materials of buildings left over, which obviously could fit into any context with anybody using it. Shortly after the war, the site of the U.S. hospital became home to 200 civilian families. We thought that because of their proximity to Water Catch Field, they might know what and who was there. We were like fenced in. It was a massive big estate, Tinsford, Tinsford Estate, Tinsford Camp. It was big, but it was fenced in and it was high wire. But you could go up over Belmont Hill, that's out of the camp and along the road. You could go to Belmont Hill and go up the hill and then turn to your left and I guess that's where, in the trees, in an area, must have been this other camp. I didn't know and none of us children knew. But even if you did know, you wouldn't have ever gone to, to it. You wouldn't, you just wouldn't. I don't know how you can go back, find people that, that are going to be alive, that know. Uh, my name is Ray, Raymond Llewellyn. Um, and I came to Tinsfield to work on the 29th of June, 1956. I came as the estate carpenter. It's very difficult to find anybody now who was of an age um, that could clearly remember what it is. You know, there's, um, Joan Brimble wasn't too sure. Mary Mack said, well, don't forget, Ray, it was 60 years ago. I'm getting on a bit now. My memory's not as good as it used to be when I asked her about and she seemed to think it was a it was a transit camp that people came there um, didn't stay very long and were moved on somewhere else um, and she was fairly certain it it set it, it their separate times sometimes there were white americans there sometimes there were black um, i don't know and there was never anything there only the concrete base in when i came to tinsfield and I've never seen anything very much in writing about it at all, to be quite honest. I'd forgotten there were so many concrete pads up here. You know, I was, I used to come up here to go to the one where the water was, and that was my... I was concerned with the water because it was leaking or doing whatever it was doing, and that was it. I never give it a thought as about what had been here or what, um, what it was all for, really.
Where we lived in, in the estate, a Lord Raxall or a Lady Raxall had a big fence put around it to stop us getting out, I think. I must admit, I'd, I'd never heard of a hospital for the blacks or a prison war camp up there. It's probably all gone because I came out of the army in 47, but the war had finished a long time before that. And I threw the ancient gone home by then. About the hospital, I knew it was all black Americans down there at that bottom camp there. I mean, the administrators, probably the higher ups, were obviously living at the other camp, probably at the top, but I cannot recall that. Well, I've got a feeling that, in fact, it was for the white staff, you know, what for the hospital, um, because the two would not mix and they were segregated. They did treat some I mean, uh, dark American. Yes, but there is none, to my knowledge, living there. I know some people seem to think there were, but I can't remember any part of the hospital being, you know, taken up with black soldiers. It could be you had a section of the American Anti-Aircraft Battalion stationed up there, because there's the concrete blocks that you found up there could well be the, the, the basics for the big 3.7 anti-aircraft guns that were used a lot in this country. So that could be one answer to it. I don't know for sure, and it's purely guesswork, but it does sound a little bit uh, as though it could well be. It was a, a big American hospital, one of the biggest in the country, and it was visited by quite a few of your dignitaries. I think Eisenhower visited at one time, and I think some of the big bands that were touring at the time, they, they came down the ramp. And as I say, the, the, these guys, some of them, as I mentioned before, drew their last breath here because it was a hospital and there was operations and guys lost their lives. And I think, and after the, the war, it became a, a, a home for many of the British servicemen who, who lost their home, homes and had nowhere to live at all. It was rapidly converted by the government of the day into joining one, two, three, and four bedrooms for their families. So it holds precious memories. And I think somehow it would be a good idea if it was possible for a commemorative plaque to be established somewhere to denote that it did house all these people. You drive by now and it's just a little bit of flat country, you didn't even know. And the few of us that are left that live there, because we're doing it, I'm well in the 80s now, will just fade away. <laughs>